when everyone asked me where I was from, when we were back growing up, I'm like, ah, uh, way out. Like, you wouldn't know. And uh, yeah, so we wrote this song called Way Out Boys. We were the way out boys, always the talk of this town. Red letter believers, map dot dream. This is Christy Garibrand and coming to you from the Guernsey County Fairgrounds with the Just a Kid from Ohio Music Fest. Sitting here talking with Rick Farrell, who has just wrapped up his performance um, with one of his most popular songs, Barbecue Stain on My Weight T-Shirt. You were kind of entertaining the crowd really with that one. Yeah, they were singing it back to me, yeah. so that's always nice. So is yeah. that one that you always have the crowd sing back to you? or? Uh, they kind of just take over, so I, by the time we start rolling towards the end of the song, they kind of, they've already got it, so I'm just like, nice. So we're going to come back to songs here in a little bit, though. Okay. Um, so tell me a little bit about what brings you out to the Just a Kid from Ohio Music Fest and what you think of the fest. Well, I'm good friends with Ryan, Robinette, who's, this is his music festival, it's his first year. And, uh, and actually me and Ryan and Casey Allen have a song out right now called Drunk on My Drink. We shot the... Uh, we shot the video actually down in Nashville on my boat. So, yeah, so I, we just saw good buddies and being Buckeye fans, I, you know, all of us being from Ohio, uh, OH, Ohio. Yeah. yeah. You gotta love it when the interview, they can read the interview with mine because I was gonna ask you about drinking <laughs> my drink. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about how that song came about. Well, actually, I was on a uh, working. I was on a songwriter's retreat in Kentucky, over on Kentucky Lake, and a bunch of us songwriters, they had all brought us in to uh, do some songwriting and hang out for like three or four days. And uh, there might have been a little bit of alcohol involved, just a tidy, okay. tiny bit, just, just for medicinal, bit. creative purposes. Okay. And uh, so the next morning, I got a little bit of, you know, I think I might have got the, uh, bottle flu, a little bit of bottle flu. Was that on. brown bottle flu? Brown bottle flu. Okay. So I've come out of the bedroom and I look over the balcony and there's uh, songwriters already down there drinking coffee and they're just laying around everywhere. And I said, uh, man, I said, who put that drunk on my drink? And everybody's antennas went up and I'm like, no, no, I said it, I'm writing it, I'm writing it. So they're all like, that's it. No. So anyway, that's how the song came about. You know, so then uh, wrote the song I guess it's been about five, six years ago. That so the song was written. You wrote about five or six years ago. Yes. And you just what, a month ago, is that one? Released it with We put it out Fourth of July. Fourth of July, July weekend. weekend, yeah. Yeah. And that was with Ryan Robinette and Casey Allen. Yes. Yeah. So how did the collaboration come about for the three of you on that? Well, actually me and Casey started talking about it. Casey wanted had always been like, Man, I'd love to do something with that song. And I said, well, I'm thinking about doing something. I'm thinking about maybe putting it out. And he said, so we kind of started thinking, what if we did something together that we're from Ohio? And then we, and then we started talking to Ryan. We're like, well, we're all three from Ohio. What if we made a, what if we made a thing out of that? You know, since all of us being Buckeyes, uh, we'll make it a thing. You know, and if it, lucky enough for the song, if it does well, we can all go back to Ohio and and uh, play our towns and our festivals. I do a festival down in Southern Ohio. Uh, so that was our thinking on it. So now, correct me if I'm wrong, but when the song released, it did quite well. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know exactly, I haven't, in fact, they haven't told me right now, but yeah, it's done really well for uh, independent artists, yeah. So what else do you have in the works right now? I'm actually excited, I'm getting a uh, song I wrote that uh, Jerry Lee Lewis is cutting next weekend. Wait, wait. Jerry Lee Lewis is cutting a song you wrote. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's going to be pretty awesome. We're bringing in, I think, Ronnie Woods from the Stones is going to play on it. We're hoping to get uh, Robbie Robinson from the band to play on it. We're going to Steve Cropper, the original blues guy, you know. Uh, so it's, it's, it should be, it's going to be neat. Any details on the song, or is it just we have to wait and see? I think we're going to have to wait and see on this one. I'm not allowed to say a whole lot about it. It's, but, yes, I'm very excited. Any idea when we can expect a release on that? I'm thinking uh, things change, but I'm guessing 
probably a year from now by the time everything's done and they do all the promotions and all that kind of stuff. It typically takes a, a little bit of time for something like that with the setup. Now you've written some pretty big songs for some pretty big names in Nashville. Who are some of the people you've written songs for? Uh, well, of course, Tim McGraw with the Barbecue Sting, uh, Martina McBride, Montgomery Gentry. Um, I go back to the uh, the older school days, uh, Earl Thomas Connolly, Tanya. Uh, now, several, you know, I've, I've always been an artist, but while trying to make it, you know, one record label to another, I've been just fortunate enough to make my living writing, writing songs along the way that people have picked up and recorded. You know, I, I never really set out to come to Nashville to write songs for other people. You know, I always write for myself, but in the process, it just kind of happens sometimes, you know. So how long have you been a singer-songwriter? Uh, I started playing guitar and writing songs when I was about eight. That's young. Yeah, that's pretty young, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, well, we won't put you on the spot with how many years it's been then. Yeah, it's been <laughs> quite a few, yeah. I'm almost 100 years old, so I mean, it's been... Uh, Don't look a day over 99. Mm -hmm. Still got the body of a 98-year-old. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Doing well. Okay, um, so, now that we got the age um, straightened out, let's talk about musical influences. Um, over the years, who have been some of your... Um, Influences. Well, before I moved to Nashville, you know, influences for me kind of always are evolving, you know, because I'm always looking, being a writer, I'm always looking for something to spark, you know, spark me into writing, something to get my creative juices flowing. But when I was young, my influences were always singer-songwriters. They were guys like uh, Jackson Brown and James Taylor, and Jim Croce, uh, outside of the country world. Um, like that, but then in the country world, of course, I grew up next door to Earl Thomas Conley's mom and dad, so Earl was a big influence on me. Uh, and then once I got to Nashville, we worked together on a lot of stuff and wrote a lot of songs together. So he continued to be more of just an influence, more like a mentor. Uh, we did a ton of stuff together. But yeah, back then, it was guys, like Earl Haggard. Um, but I always kind of tended to lean towards singer-songwriters. So, outside of music, what do you enjoy doing? I like, I grew up playing sports, so before I come to Nashville, I, I, I went to college to play basketball. My dad was a coach, and I uh, kind of, I grew up sleeping with a, with a ball, you know, was, that was that kid, gym rat, I guess you'd say. Uh, but music was always something that I did when nobody was looking. At that age, I was never in the choir or in the band or anything. I don't think I, most of my friends didn't even know I played guitar. You know, when I moved to Nashville, the, somehow in my hometown, the rumor got around that I'd come down to Nashville to play baseball. And I'm and they're like, "So you're down there playing baseball?" And I'm like, "No, I'm, I'm down there, you know, pursuing music." And they're like, "Music? What, what music are you doing?" And I'm like, "Well, you know, I just didn't know because I had been writing songs for about." Every, I'd just be staying up all night long writing songs while I was going to the freshman in college. And um, I never knew why. I'm like, man, I'm just, it was just like something was driving me to do it. And I'm, I'm like, I'm just never going to be able to do anything with these songs. I'm in Portsmouth, Ohio. But those songs that I wrote actually be, were the songs that got me to Nashville. So when I got an opportunity, somebody called Earl, through Earl Thomas Conley's connection, I, uh, I got asked to send some songs down, and then when I did, they said, would you come down? And so that was the end of my basketball career. Great. All right. Um, you want to tell your fans how to reach you on social media? Yeah, just Rick Farrell Music across the board on, on everything. Facebook, uh, MySpace, big on MySpace still. Yeah, I think it's coming back. MySpace? <laughs> <laughs> you just, is that not a thing? You just is told that, how old you were. Is that not a... No, but Instagram, MySpace, all that. I don't really mess with with uh, Twitter, but uh, definitely on uh, what is it? Facebook. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Kind of starting diving into TikTok a little bit. You know. You're braver than I am. I well, <laughs> I say diving in. I'm, I'm dipping a toe in. I guess I'm not. I wouldn't say diving. 
But yeah, just Rick Thrall music on everything. So go check and check out our song Drunk My Drink. Okay. Let us know what you think about it. All right. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Well, you're very welcome. Thank you all for it's having me. It's been a real pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Rick Farrell and Christy Garibrand. We were the way out boys. Always the talk of this town. Red letter believers. Map